Hey, welcome back guys. Jerry with 3D HP. Time for another amazing resin video on the Pia Poly Forge that I got, well, I don't know, three or four days ago. I thought I'd do another video on it. I have more resin to try out and jam heat. I'm going to be using their art engineering resin today. And let me take a look at what's in the pack here and show you. Cut the safety seal. We've got a couple of filters. We've got some gloves. Always wear your gloves and working with resin. Wear safety glasses. Little USB stick. That's got a slicer on it if you choose to use it. Oh, here's another filter. Very well wrapped in bubble paper. Inside the bubble paper, it's completely sealed in a nice bag. And I already have a bottle here opened up. And underneath the cap, there will be a safety seal that you can simply cut with a knife or peel, you know, bend it back, take it off, whatever you choose to do. Be sure you shake up your resin really super good. I don't know, 10, 20 seconds, whatever. Shake it up really good before you use it and have it at room temperature. You don't want to have it in a really cold environment or you'll have to warm it up a little bit. Um, in my house, I keep about 76, 77 degrees, something like that right now. So the other room, it'll be perfectly fine. And I'm going to be doing a model by Wicked Art Patreon today, a clone trooper. So that'll be really cool. Also, I figured out how to hook up my resin lapse cable from Uncle Jesse and Andrew Sink that they sell. That they sell. Basically, it has to have a UV light source on the resin printer. It runs up to your Canon DSLR. I think it supports one other camera. I'm not sure, but I have a Canon DSLR. I'll show you where I ran the cable, how I hooked that up, so you learn how to do that. Because I was asking on the line, I asked the company, you know, where I can run it on this. I didn't get any feedback from anybody. So I took off the back panel, the side panel, the front panel. I figured that out. But I'll show you that here in this video. So let's get to printing. Okay, clone trooper got done. Let's see how he came out. Oh wow, I guess I should have made that a lot bigger, huh? <laughs> Look at all that room. Yeah, very cool. Let's see what we got here. Oh. Yeah, these medium supports and light sheet, they're dense. But it looks good. Get it popped off the build plate and uh, get it cleaned up. Then we'll move on to the base. Alrighty, the base got done. Let's take a look. Yeah, looking good. And this got done last night, actually, and that's why you're not seeing anything on the screen about it. Had it shut off overnight. Get that off the build plate. Take a peek. Yeah, looking good. Yep, and we got resin running out, but get it all cleaned up and uh, pre-wash it, and then I'll get it in my IPA and all cleaned up. And there goes the rest of the model right there. Okay, the Mandalorian bust just got done on the GK2 the Uniformation 8K resin printer. Let's take it off and take a look at it and then I got to print the base and the logo and this is at a hundred percent scale as it was designed it's real nice okay the base got done 
for uh, the Mandalorian. So we can get it off. And once again, this is at 100% scale. The size it was designed at. Looks like it sliced real well, printed real well. It's time to get it off build plate and we'll get it washed up. Okay, the head got done, first one. And looks amazing. And that's at a 200% scale. So I'll get that off the build plate and then I will start the next one, which will be the with the helmet on. Some of that excess resin run out there. Take a look at it. Looks great. Okay, the Mandalorian head's done. Take a look at the screen here, see how long it took. And that's at 200% scale. This is for my Mandalorian bust from Wicked Art Patreon. It's probably going to have a little resin run out of it. No, I guess not. It came out amazing. Okay, let me show you how I fill my resin lapses. In this first picture here, you'll see my Canon DSLR, which has a ring light around it. And the light in the room is off when I use a ring light. That way it doesn't flicker real bad. Um, the first thing you want to do is to remove the vat. You do not want the vat in the printer when you go to do this. On the Pia Poly Forge, you, now you can do this on all resin printers. You just have to figure out where the light source is. So on the PO Poly Forge, you remove the front panel. As I'm going to show you here in the next picture. And uh, here's a cable I'm going to be hooking up today. This is by Uncle Jesse and Andrew Sink. They're resin lapse cable. And on, on the end of that cable, it has a sensor. And the UV light triggers this. So every time it does a layer and the UV light comes on, it triggers and it takes a picture. So during one print, it might be three or 4,000 pictures. When you put it into your uh, slice, your uh, editing software, which I use DaVinci Resolve, it basically takes all those print pictures, makes a video out of it, and then I go in and speed it up or slow it down as fast as I want. And then with the front panel off, you can see where I ran the cable. You can see the UV light source. You'll see in the next picture, I've got it activated. In order to see it lighting up, you just do a vat clean. They, not a vat clean, but you do an exposure test. Once you do an exposure test, as seen in the next picture, it will light up and you can see where you need to run the sensor. Just barely over on the corner of the grid. Then I took some captain tape, taped it off, and I drilled a small hole in the side of the case to run the wire out. Um, and that's basically how it works. Well, that might have been kind of long, but I wanted to explain how the resin lapse cable worked from Uncle Jesse and Andrew Sink. I simply love it, and I've had it for a few years from them. I have two different cables. I got one hooked up on the uh, PO Poly Forge now, the one on the Uniformation GK2 AK resin printer. Anyway, enough with that. Uh, yeah, my first model that I got done uh, from Wicked Art Patreon. As you've seen, I went ahead and I glued him together. I printed him in two pieces out, but the trooper came out amazing. And yeah, I should have done him a lot bigger. It's a really cool little statue. He's glued together. I'll show you some close-ups of this. But this, I don't want to drop him on the floor. But this uh, art engineering resin that I'm using, yeah, I looked at the box to make sure I got the name right. Um, it's really amazing stuff. And the reason I say that is when you have a raft on a model, now all you guys know that resin print, when you take off the raft, the raft is very brittle. Shatter sometimes flies across the room. Well, I want to show you something here. This raft is not cured, but I have cleaned it in IPA. Look at this. We're talking very flexible. Look at that. Now, it's like I say, it's not cured here, but look how flexible that is. It's not shattering. It's not breaking. This resin is very thick. It is very flexible. So you might have to tweak your settings just a little bit when using this, but it is very, flick, very thick and very flexible. Okay, I just put this out in the sun. It's about, I don't know, close to 90 degrees here in Vegas. Nice and sunny. I laid this out on the table for 10 to 15 minutes per side. It's still a little bit warm. Look, didn't break. That is amazing. 
that is amazing. So this art engineering resin is amazing. That's all I can say. You know, it's not brittle. Once it cured, you're like, oh no, it's going to break. No, check this out, dude. Guys, this is amazing. Amazing. And this model came out great on the PO Poly printing it. My 6K resin printer. The base came out amazing. And once that's all painted up, that can get glued together. It has grain holes in it. It's all been hollowed. I hollowed two millimeters thick when I on this particular print. Now, something I, something I wanted to mention. I did. I was going to print this Mandalorian at 200% on the PO Poly. And I'll show you a picture here on the screen. I was printing it. And I was running low on my resin here. On my art engineering resin. So I took a bottle of their standard resin. I dumped it in the vat overnight. I woke up the next morning and look at this picture right here. Yeah. Don't know what happened. I didn't properly mix it. I've mixed resin for years with different companies and different types, but I've shucked it up really well. Never had a problem. This time I did. I contacted the company and they told they gave me some recommendations for working with the GK2 and working with the PO Poly with this particular resin. I need to tweak a few settings. But I'm not really sure why that happened, but it did happen, and it's just kind of odd that a lot of the supports are missing there. So once that print got done and I removed it and threw it away, I took drained the resin out of the vat, put it back in one bottle, shook it up really good, put it in my GK2, and then I went on with a blended resin. I printed out the Mandalorian here by Wicked Art Patreon. There's the actor's face. He looks amazing. Now, I went ahead and glued the bust to the base, and I glued the emblem on the front. I can paint it like that. The heads will not be glued down because you can simply switch them out when you want it to be standard or you can put his helmet on. That is beautiful. That is wonderful. I love this. It's amazing. And then I figured, you know what? I'm going to print that out at 200% anyway. So let's do his head at 200%. Look at this. That's hollow 2 millimeters thick. That is beautiful. And as you've seen, I grabbed it by the hair. Because if there's any tiny damage or supports, it's very easy to clean up in the hair when you go to paint it and prime it. On the face, you might have little pits or little damage here and there. You might have to putty it up and change it. But by attaching it to the hair, you, you avoid that completely. Drain holes are in the bottom. So here's 100% scale as of a design, and here's 200% scale on that model. So hopefully when you come back for the next video, I will have the rest of this bust done, and I'll show you these heads. And here's the helmet also, 200% scale. Look at the texture in that. And if you can't see it from there, I'll give you some close-ups of it. But all the texture and the detail from the sculpt came out amazing. This resin done an amazing job. And one thing about their 10K resin, it's good for all resin printers. You don't have to just use it in a Pacific printer like a 6K, an 8K, a 4K, a 2K. This will work in all resin printers. So if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I only have a 4K. I only got a 2K printer. I've got a 6K. This resin's perfect. It'll work in all your printers. It is amazing resin. Like I say, they're a resin manufacturer. They manufacture resin for many companies, and many companies buy from them. They put their label on it, and then whatever company sells it under their brand. That's kind of how the world works, just like with filament. There's only X amount of filament companies out there in the world, so other companies buy from them. They put their own label on it. They pick their own color, whatever it may be. But this nebula gray prints awesome. I love the color. Prints really nice. Got some cool heads here at a 200% scale. And, uh, yeah, it's great stuff, but unbelievable when I went to take this raft off, like I said, and, you know, look how flexible it is. That is just crazy. Very, very flexible. Perfect, perfect, perfect for a lot of your projects. More than likely, if I dropped him on the floor, he wouldn't break. I'm not going to find out, but more than likely, he wouldn't break. And in my last video, you've probably seen the sculpt I did by Fotis Men. And I did this in the same resin from Jam, Jam He. He's painted. I finally painted something. Check out this end in bust. It's a Cheyenne Elder by Brodus Mint, and you can find this over on my mini factory. Came out amazing. Uh, the base I printed in FDM. I didn't resin print that. I started to, and it's like, nah, it's a waste of waste of resin. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing highly detailed. There's no reason for this base to be made out of resin. But that's at, I believe, 200% scale, and he came out amazing. So I'll show you some close-ups here. And uh, I guess that's about it until the next video. So. Please like, subscribe, share, check out these really cool photos. I'd really appreciate it. Um, you know, share my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Until next time, you guys have an awesome day. Later.